Welcome back everyone, I'm Robert Breaker and today we're going to be having another Sunday message. I always bring these to you for every Sunday and post them to my website, thecloudchurch.org. Today I have, I guess, a little bit of a strange title and I'll get to that here in a second. But uh, turn, if you would, to the book of Jude and we're going to read verses 3 through 5. And after we read that, then I'll get into this title. Now, Hang with me. There's a reason why I used a certain word that I used in this title. And as you get to the end of this message, you'll see, oh, well, it makes sense. It makes sense. So Jude in verse 3. And in Jude 3 through 5, we read these words. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write it to you of the common salvation. I want to talk about salvation today because salvation is so important. You know, there's still so many people in the world that aren't saved. I just want to see them get saved. And he says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the what? For the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. And that's what I want to do. I want to always be active, earnestly contending for the faith, because we're saved by faith. Faith in what? We're going to get there today, and I'm going to show you what our faith as Christians should be in. Now, why do we earnestly contend for the faith? Why do we always make it a point to preach the gospel? Verse 4, For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. There's, there's your trinity right there, Lord Jesus Christ, in one verse. But then in verse 5 says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Now he's talking about Israel and what Israel went through. But it's interesting that he says, remember. So in these three passages, let's look again at what we saw. Verse 3, earnestly contend for the faith. That's what I'll be doing today. I want to earnestly contend for the faith. Why? Well, verse 4, because there's some that come in and what do they do? They turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. They twist the gospel, if you will. They, they change you and turn you away from the message of saved by grace to a message of saved by works. You've got to watch out for such people. They say it's not faith that saves you. It's you've got to do this. You've got to watch out for those people. Those don't have the true gospel. And they even deny the Lord. Isn't that sad? But what does he tell us to do? He says, verse 5, to remember, to remember. So I want to bring to your mind some things that you probably already know if you watch my channel. But this is also for those that don't know, because there's a lot of people that, well, they've forgotten. Or there's a lot of people that never got this true message of salvation. And that's what I want to bring to you today, the message of salvation. So I want to talk about today the trinity of salvation. Now you go, what? The trinity of salvation? Yes, I understand that does sound a little, little strange. But again, if you'll just wait till the end of this, you'll see why I used that word. Now, Trinity, I will tell you, is a man-made word, and it's not in the Bible. The word Trinity does not appear in the Bible. What does appear is the doctrine of the Trinity. We call it the doctrine of the Godhead, because in the Bible, three times, by the way, I find that very interesting, the word Godhead appears, showing you that the Godhead consists of three, but yet those three are one. So three times the word Godhead shows up in the Bible. Isn't that interesting? Three times hmm. in our King James Bible. Now, our God is one God in three, but those three are one. And that's what many Christians today call the Trinity. And by the way, the belief in the Trinity for many of us who are Bible believers is the belief in one God, not three gods. One God in three, but those three are one. There's some people running around now who claim to be Bible believers who claim that, nope, nope, you can't believe that. If you believe in the doctrine of the Trinity, you believe in three gods. I have never in my life ever thought that God was three separate gods. I hate it when people put words in your mouth and try to say, no, you believe this. I know what I believe. A lot of other people know what they believe, and we believe in one God in three, but those three are one. Now, let me tell you why we believe that. First John chapter 5, and verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven. So there's three. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Oh, so they're one. So three are one. And the old saying is, three and one and one and three, and the one in the middle died for me. So when we look at this teaching of 1 John 
chapter 5. And by the way, you know some new versions change that. Some new versions of the Bible take that out. Some new versions of the Bible take out uh, half of that. And so they don't want you to know that God is one in three. And they mess that verse up. It's so sad. But the King James Bible has that verse in it because that's what was in the originals. How do we know that? Well, they say the oldest text are three, four, five, six, seven hundred years after Jesus. The Vat, Acanus, Anus, sounds bad. And uh, Sin, Sinaiticus, Sin, that sounds bad too. So these so-called older manuscripts don't have all of 1 John 5, 7. Well, guess what? We have quotes 100 years after Jesus where people are quoting 1 John 5, 7. So obviously those manuscripts, which are from the center of Gnosticism, uh, changed it. And it was the Gnostics that changed the verse. Originally written in 1 John 5, 7 is what it says in the King James Bible. And it says there are three that bear record in heaven. So there's the Father, there's the Word, and there's the Holy Ghost. And we know who these are. Without a doubt, the Father is, of course, the Father. The Word is Jesus, the Son. And then the Holy Ghost, who would that be? That would be the Holy Spirit. All these work in tandem. And these three are one. Jesus is God, the Father is God, and the Holy Spirit are God. They all make up the one God. They're not three separate gods. That's a very foolish thing for people to think. And you've got to watch out. I just got a phone call here a little bit ago before I started doing this sermon from a guy. He said, hey, what about this fella? And he showed me some fella who was a Pentecostal oneness and who does not believe in the doctrine of the Trinity. But the Bible teaches it. And I just read it to you. These three are one. So this is the doctrine of the Trinity or the Godhead. So one God in three, but those three are one. We would call this unity in Christ. God is a triune God. Triune. Triune is three, and then yun is one. So God is a God of unity. And he's united in one, but there's three. But those three are one. So don't ever think there's three gods. There's one God, and that's God Almighty. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, and verse 26... God says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Why would God speak like that? Because God is three in one. Otherwise, he would have said, let me make in my. <laughs> but he said in our. Why? Because God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And all that makes the one God. One in three. Three in one. So it's one God, as the Bible teaches. And it clearly says these three are one. But the Bible also says that we, man, are made in God's image. So we, man, we consist of, guess what? We consist of three parts. And we are a body, a soul, and a spirit. If you don't believe it, go to uh, 1 Timothy 5.23 and read that for yourself. So God made us in his image. Actually, let me say that again. God made Adam in his image. And Adam was created in the image of God, so as God is three in one, we are three in one. We are a triune being created in God's image. Now, the Bible teaches, though, that Adam fell, and it says we are in Adam's image. So we're all created in this world, or maybe I should say procreated in this world, and we have a body soul, but our spirit is dead. So we're two-thirds. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to come inside of us. So it's very important that we understand the doctrine of the Trinity or the Godhead. It's three in one. Three manifestations of the same God. And they all work together. Now, I don't wish to speak about the Trinity today, rather about salvation, as I see a triune union in salvation as well. Let me go back to creation. In creation, we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit working. You just have to read the first three uh, verses in Genesis, and you clearly see the Father. Then you see the Son, and then you see the Holy Ghost. And they're all active in creation. Well, do you realize that they're all active in salvation? Boy, I can't wait to get into this. This has been a great Bible study for me, and I can't wait to talk about this. But I also see a triunity in salvation. It takes three things for us to be saved. What are these things? Well, let's look at some verses first, and I'm going to go to 
some verses, but I want you to see that all three are active in salvation. Okay, remember that. Follow that in the back of your, your head. But let's go to Acts chapter 15. And I just want to give you as many verses as I possibly can. As I earnestly contend for the faith, amen, and show you what the faith is that we're supposed to contend for. And what exactly our faith is to be in. Now, there's three things that work together. Three things that work together in salvation. First of all, grace. And in Acts chapter 15 and verse 11, Peter says, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So Acts 15 and 11 says we're saved by grace. Isn't that wonderful? Saved by grace. What a blessing it is to be saved by grace. If you have a hymn book, and you know me, I like to sing from the hymn book sometimes. There's a hymn, Saved by Grace, and it's a beautiful, beautiful hymn. Well, now let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And over here in Ephesians chapter 2, we'll just look first at verse 5 to reiterate what I just showed you. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are you saved. Okay, so we're saved by grace. Now, verse 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we're also saved by, I can draw this up here, saved by faith. So grace through faith is our salvation, by grace through faith. So we're saved by faith. Um, you could go to Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Verse 30, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So faith is belief. So we're saved by believing. It's also trust. These all are the same thing in the Bible. You trust the Lord for salvation. You believe and you receive salvation. By faith you are saved, the Bible teaches. Now we're in Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. Let me show you what else we're saved by. We're saved by, look at this, Ephesians 1, 7. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Now, redemption would be salvation. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So, according to his grace, and then the other verse says, through faith. So, grace through faith, and then through blood. So, we're saved by blood. And that blood is the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary for our sins. So we clearly see three things working together in tandem. Grace, faith, and blood. And these three things work together. That's what I want to call, and, and I'm tongue-in-cheek, I guess, if you will, using the word Trinity. Uh, I know some people don't like the word Trinity, so, <laughs> and some people don't like the gospel of salvation uh, and the blood of Jesus. So it's kind of fun to be able to put all this together. But uh, it says you're saved by blood. So we're saved by grace through faith and blood. That's what the Bible teaches. Those are the three main elements that make up what it is of salvation. And notice it's two parts God and one part us. God's grace and God's blood that was shed and through our faith we receive salvation. So let me go to some more verses. Let's go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and I just want to take you through a lot of verses. And I want you to see what salvation is and how these three things work together for salvation. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through faith. So we have everlasting consolation. That's everlasting life. We know we're saved by grace. So you see us saved through grace. Just another verse that talks about it's through grace. Now let's go to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 9. I just want to go through each one of these again. That's grace. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 9. Philippians 3 9 says, and be found in him. Now some of the words we're looking at for salvation over here, we, we're seeing different words used for salvation. And one of the words we're seeing used is redemption. We saw forgiveness of sins. For by grace are you saved through faith. We saw saved. 
Um, here's one that's imputed righteousness. When we're saved, we get imputed righteousness. And that doesn't come by our works, righteousness. We get imputed righteousness only through faith. That's what the Bible says. So we come over here to Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. Paul speaking, and he says, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So how do we get this imputed righteousness? Through faith. So faith is an essential key of salvation. There's no salvation by your works or by what you do. You must have faith in order to be saved. Salvation is through faith. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 3.15. 2 Timothy 3.15. I was talking to a guy the other day, and uh, he came across some fella. And it's crazy, some of the things that people say. And uh, this fella said something like, uh, you know, Oh, you say salvation's only by faith and by believing. You're trying to believe your way to heaven, <laughs> is what this fella said. It's like, well, well, that's how you get to heaven, by believing. So... When someone says something outlandish like that, you got to wonder, is that person even saved? I mean, what are they saying? They don't understand what salvation even is. For by grace are you saved through faith, through believing. So the way to get to heaven is through faith, through believing. <laughs> Why would someone say, you're trying to believe your way to heaven? That's the only way to get to heaven. Through grace, through faith, and through blood. Now, it says here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and verse 15, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So we're saved by grace. We're saved by faith. I mean, I'm going through and I'm showing you the verses that tell us that we're saved by faith. And the scriptures are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith. So through faith we receive salvation. Now, the next one is the blood. We're saved by grace, we're saved by faith, or by believing, we're saved by blood. Let's go to uh, Hebrews, I believe, chapter 9 and verse 22. Hebrews 9, 22. In the Old Testament, there was no forgiveness of sins unless they brought a blood sacrifice for their sins. And in the New Testament, it's the same thing. But Paul is telling us in verse 22, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Remission of sins. Remission means God forgives. In the Old Testament, it was remission. And today, it's redemption. But you can still use the word remission in speaking of salvation because it's blood that takes your sins away, or remits them, or takes them out. But he tells us in verse 23, but no, it's the blood of who? Jesus. It's a better sacrifice, verse 24. So he's telling us you can't have forgiveness of sins without blood. It takes blood to be forgiven. Well, guess what? Jesus went to the cross, and Jesus shed his what? Woo, praise the Lord, Jesus shed his blood. And so without that shed blood, how do we get saved? We don't. There's no salvation outside of the blood of Jesus Christ. You must have the blood to be saved. And thank God he shed his blood. Now let's go over to 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. And there are churches out there that don't believe this. That's why we must earnestly contend for the faith, because they have another gospel. And they try to get people back under the Old Testament law. But we're not under the law. We're under the church age, a time of grace. So again, it goes back to grace. It's not the law that saves us. It's grace. But it's also our faith. We've got to put faith in something. We've got to receive that something. And we can't get saved without that blood being shed for our sins. You've got to understand that. So 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19 says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. See, watch out for tradition. Follow the Bible, not tradition. Got a great, great uh, email a while back of a woman who said she was in a... a predominant uh, denomination, a huge religion. And she said they always told her, never read the Bible, just follow what we say. And one day she just got in the Bible and started reading it, and she realized, man, everything they say is against the Bible. I'm going with the Bible. And so she saw through tradition, and she saw it's only the blood. Because it says you're not redeemed by that. Verse 19 says, but with. So you're redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. Is that blood of Jesus Christ precious to you? Is it precious? 
So this is what I call the trinity of salvation, or the triunity of what it takes to get saved. There's got to be grace, there's got to be faith, and there's got to be bloodshed for your sins on your behalf. And that's what took place. So here we go, and we look at another word that salvation is. Salvation is redemption, forgiveness of sins, imputed righteousness, remission. But salvation is also justification. And when we go to Paul in the Bible, it's the Apostle Paul who God gave a lot of revelations to. And the Apostle Paul says he is the Apostle to the Gentiles. And that would be Romans 11, 13. So we look at Paul, and we look at the preaching of Paul, and Paul was the guy that God revealed the message of justification to, and how to be justified. And let's go to Acts chapter 13, and verse 38. Acts chapter 13, verse 38 and 39. Acts 13, 38 and 39, God revealed to Paul. And boy, this message changed the whole world, and so many people got saved through this message of justification. Because Paul was preaching these three things for salvation. And you know what? This message of justified by faith, that message right there changed the world again. The message of justification changed the world twice with Paul and with Martin Luther, because it kicked off what's called the Protestant Reformation, because he said, man, you're justified by faith, the Bible teaches. So you got to understand that. you got to understand that. But let's look at Acts 13, 38 and 39. Look at what Paul preaches. Paul does not preach you're saved by your works. Paul does not preach you're saved by keeping the law. Paul says this, verse 38 and 39, which, by the way, Paul tells us in Galatians, is what God revealed to him. So if you don't take this message and accept it, you're rejecting Jesus Christ. Because Paul says he got this by revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 38, Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, Jesus, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. So we're forgiven through Jesus. And by him, all that believe, you mean you believe your way to heaven? Well, that's the only way to get to heaven. It's through faith, through believing. I'm going to show you some more verses on that. And by him all that believe are justified, right there, from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So it's not the law, it's not works. It's not the works that save us. What saves us? Faith. Not by works, by faith. So this is what the Bible teaches, and it's so plain to see. Now, when he preached that, if you read through the book of Acts, and I would, I would highly recommend you to do so, you'll see that this caused a big stink in the church. And when you go to Acts chapter 15, you see Paul going to all the apostles that were still alive in the early church, and they talked about this. And they said, hey, are we still under the law? Or are we under grace through faith? What is it that saves us? And Peter steps up and says, verse 9, and put no difference between us, who? Jews and Gentiles. And them, between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. It's by faith, folks. It's faith that saves us. It's not works. Thank God it's by faith. And then verse 11, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So the message of grace through faith and not of works. That is the message of salvation in the Bible for us today in the church age. And Paul preached that. And guess who got on board with Paul? Peter. Peter preached a grace message. Ooh, boy, some of these hyper-dispensationalists don't like to hear that. But if they read their Bible, and I, I'm not saying they don't read their Bible, but if they would ever get a hold of that in the Bible, because it's there, they wouldn't be a hyper-dispensationalist. Peter got on the same page as Paul and said it's grace through faith in Acts chapter 15. So you've got to get a hold of that. So Paul's message was one of justification. And it's a great thing, the word justified. Just if I'd. You take the word justified and you break it up. It's just if I'd never sinned. That's what happens when you get saved by faith. In God's eyes, he imputes his righteousness to you. And it's just if I'd never sinned because God forgives me my sin. That's a blessing. Justification, what a beautiful thing. Now, we'll go to the book of Romans. Let me show you Paul and what Paul preached. Because Paul preached the trinity of salvation. Paul preached this is how you get saved. And let's look at that. Let's go to Romans chapter 3. Let's go to Romans 3. 
I want to go to Romans chapter 3 and verse 24. And look at what Paul preached as he preached justified. Paul preached justified by what? By three things. Paul the Apostle preached that you're justified by three things. The first one is found in Romans chapter 3 and verse 24. And in Romans 3, 24, we read, Being justified freely, so that's through grace, not by works. It's a free gift, by the way. Chapter 4 tells you about that, that salvation is a free gift through faith. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So it's by grace that we're justified, according to Paul. Okay, we saw that. We're saved by grace. So Paul preaches a message of justified by grace. Now, Titus chapter 3, verse 7, just so I can give you another verse where he says the same thing. Titus chapter 3, verse 7, we read these words. Titus 3, 7. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So it's through grace that we're justified, or that we're saved. Now back to Romans chapter 3 again. Let's look at the second one. Romans chapter 3. And let's look at Romans chapter 3 and verse 28. But also it's found in 5.1. So this one I'm going to give you a twofer. <laughs> Twice Paul says it. Okay, Because Paul is telling us about the trinity of salvation, the three things that work together for salvation. Romans chapter 3 and verse 28. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So it's not the works that you do. Works, by the way, are deeds. It's not your deeds, your good deeds that get you to heaven. It's not doing the law. It's whether or not you are believing in something. Whether or not you're saved by faith. Because if you're trusting in your works or in your deeds or in something you do, you are still lost because you missed the way of salvation that God tells you is how we're saved. So if you're trusting in anything you do to get you to heaven, you are lost. That includes your baptism, your church attendance, even your own repentance. An old preacher said one time, my very repentance needs to be repented of. Nothing that you can bring to God will he accept because you're a sinner, and he won't accept the work of a sinner. You must come as a sinner to God and just say, Lord, I believe, I receive, I accept you, I trust you. You don't come to God with your works and say, Lord, I saw what you did on the cross, your work for me, but that's not good enough. Accept what I do for you. That's slapping Jesus in the face and spitting at him, because that's saying, that wasn't good enough, Lord, to save me, that shedding of your blood. No, I'm going to do something, too. Now, you're the co-savior, are you? You're going to try to save yourself? You're going to put yourself on equal standing with Jesus and say, I'm just as good as you are? That's not salvation. Salvation is, Lord, I'm no good. I cannot save myself. I trust in you for salvation. That's when we're saved. Not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We looked at that last week. So we see that salvation is what? By grace and by faith. Justified by faith. There in verse 28. Now look at chapter 5, verse 1. We see the same thing. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When you're saved, you have peace. I've talked to a lot of people over the years that tell me, Brother Breaker, I don't know if I'm saved or not. I don't know if I'm saved or not. Oh, I don't have any peace. I don't have any peace. I give them this simple message and say it's all about the blood. And when they understand and they receive salvation correctly through faith in what God says to put your faith in, which we're going to see here in a minute, what that is clearly given in the Bible, they say, I have peace. I don't doubt it anymore. I know I'm saved because I'm trusting in the thing that God said to put my faith in. Now I know I'm on my way to heaven. So we have faith. Now go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Romans 5, 9. And in Romans 5, 9... Paul tells us yet another thing that justifies us. We are justified by. Remember, in Romans 3.28 and 5.1, we're justified by faith. I showed you those verses. Romans 5.9 says, Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. So Paul tells us that it's the blood that's so important. And that it's the blood that justifies as well. 
So do you see this triune message? <laughs> this trinity of salvation, if you will, hence the name or the title of this message. Do you see how these three things work together as one in order to be saved? We are saved through what Jesus did. The best way to explain this is that we are saved by, watch this, we are saved by God's grace. It's God's grace. God had to have grace to want to save us. And thank God he did. Because God could have been up in heaven and said, you know, I'm done. I'm done. No more grace. The Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But nobody else did. Just Noah and his family. God destroyed the earth. But God looked down and he said, you know, I'm going to give grace to everybody. I'm going to send away for everybody to be saved. Thank God for God's grace and his wanting us to have a chance to be saved. Wanting to do something for us to, to be saved. But it's not what we do that saves us. It's we have to come through the way that he set up according to his grace. We are saved by God's grace through, I'm going to misspell through, our faith. You see, faith is what you need. So your faith must be in something. God chose salvation by faith, by believing. You've got to believe something. God's grace through our faith in Jesus' blood. You see, it's the blood of Jesus. And that blood was shed to forgive us our sins. But just the fact that he shed his blood isn't what saves us. If that's the case, then the whole world's already saved because Jesus shed his blood for everybody, right? <laughs> no, there must be a reception, a receiving of that. And the way you receive the atonement of Christ is through your faith. And it's through your faith in Jesus' blood. So, let me put it that way. I put our, I'll just put your up here. I'll make this personal. God's grace through your faith in Jesus' blood. You say, what, Brother Breaker? What are you trying to say? Three things that the Bible says are essential that make up salvation. You're saved by grace, you're saved by faith, you're saved by the blood. The Bible clearly teaches that it's through God's grace, through our faith in Jesus' blood that we're saved. So you've got to put your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. And let's look at that. Romans chapter 3 and verse 25. Romans chapter 3 and verse 25. Remember, you're saved by faith. Faith in what? What should our faith be in? Romans chapter 3 and verse 25. This is the verse I got saved reading. In Romans chapter 3 verse 25 says, Whom God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So when you put your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, when you trust what He did for you, because it was His grace to do that for you, now He says, receive me by faith. He doesn't say, now know all about that, but then do good works and I'll accept you. He says, no, my grace is, I did this for you. I died on the cross for your sins. I was buried, I rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, do you receive what I did in your place for your sins? Do you accept it? And there's a lot of religious people out there that say, no. No, I think i got to do this. I think i got to do that. Lord, I'm going to do this first. Well, and please accept this. And they come to God outside of the grace of God. And they come to God outside of faith. And they come through their own works. And they're lost because they're not trusting in the blood of Jesus. If you want to be saved, you need to see the trinity of salvation. You need to see the triunity of how this thing works. It's God's grace, and it's your faith in Jesus' blood that saves you, through faith in his blood. You must accept God's offer of salvation by grace through believing in his blood atonement. Go to Romans chapter 5, verse 11. You must receive. So salvation is to be received. Not everyone's saved. Only those that receive by faith are saved. Faith in what? Faith in the blood. Are you trusting in the blood of Jesus to get you to heaven? Romans 5.11 And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the what? The atonement. What is the atonement? It's a blood atonement of Jesus Christ. So salvation is by grace through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. You've got grace, you've got faith, and you've got blood all working together. And without that, there's no way to be saved. 
So do you see the triunity, if you will? Let's look at some more verses. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Now, some people will stand up and go, no, you got it wrong. It's not faith that saves you. you got to do works. Well, they're obviously not reading Paul's epistles. Because Paul teaches salvation by faith, justified by faith. And Paul teaches eternal security. When you're saved, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And it's in you forever. And you can't lose it because salvation is the free gift of eternal life. But in Romans chapter 3 and verse 22, look what it says. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So the Bible is very clear. It's through faith. It's through believing. I'm going to show you a verse here in a minute. It's through trusting that you're saved. And then you get the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. Let's go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 2. Romans 5, 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So through faith in the blood of Jesus, now you have access to the grace of God. Now God showed his grace to the world by sending his son to die for the world. But all sinners who do not receive that, the Bible says the wrath of God abides on them. And that they're going to go down to a place where they don't want to go and burn because they refused what Jesus did. So the, the grace has been offered them, but they don't receive the grace by faith. But we have access to the grace of God. When we believe in the blood, now we're going to heaven. We're going to be with God for all eternity because he had his grace upon us in the sense that he forgave us through faith. So are you saved? Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Have you come to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you know this message? you know how few churches preach this simple, basic message? One of the most basic doctrines for the Christian to learn after they get saved is the doctrine of the Trinity. So I would say Trinity and salvation are probably the two most important doctrines of the Christian faith. So if you can see a Trinity in salvation itself... <laughs> I thought, man, maybe this would help some people. So hence the title. I know it sounds funny, the Trinity of Salvation, but I'm going to bring it all together here in a minute. I can't wait. I'm excited to get to the end of this and show you where I'm going with this. Galatians chapter 3, though, I want to show you more verses on salvation by faith because we're only saved by faith. Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. So it's not the law that saves us. Verse 22, But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Oh, so we get something through believing. What is that promise? The promise of the Holy Spirit. The promise of forgiveness of sins. Look at verse 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Again, justified by faith. Verse 26, For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So it's only through faith that we are the children of God. Let's go to uh, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. So it's by faith that we're saved. And we get the Holy Spirit. Now, does God want your faith? Some people out there, they're like, no, God wants your works. He doesn't want your faith. Well, after you're saved, you do good works because you're saved. You don't do good works to get saved or to say saved. When you do get saved through faith, then you do good works because you're saved and because you love Jesus. It's not to get to heaven. You're going to heaven because you believe. But you do good works after you're saved to show God how much you love him. So works have nothing to do with getting saved or staying saved. Works are something we do as sons of God when we are saved because we love him who saved us. Now Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, look what the Bible says. A lot of religious people in this world just as lost as a goose, just as lost as a golf ball in high weeds. And they desperately, earnestly want to go to heaven and they want to please God. And yet they bypass this message and they cry to come to heaven their own way and say, God, you've got to accept me because I do this. And God says, fooey on that. No, 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 no. Come my way, not your way. And look what God says. Hebrews eleven six. but without faith it is impossible to please him. It is impossible to please him. You want to please God? Well, come the way God said, through faith. 
But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God demands faith. You know what else God demands? Blood. All throughout the Bible, when they sinned, God demanded a blood sacrifice, a blood atonement. Leviticus 17.11, life of the flesh is the blood. I've given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the souls. So God has chosen blood as the only means of forgiveness of sins. And God has chosen faith as the only means to please Him. And through Paul, God showed us, your faith must be in the blood for God to be happy with you and take you to heaven. That's what the Bible teaches. Now let's go to uh, Ephesians 1.13. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. I want to show you this real quick, Ephesians 1.13. In Ephesians 1.13, look what the Bible says. See, there's some people out there, they, they say, well, I agree with this whole message, but I think you can lose it. <laughs> then you don't understand. The grace of God is so great that once you're saved, you're always saved. God doesn't take back that gift of eternal life. You don't understand grace. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. Paul says, In whom ye also trusted, there's the word trust, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Now what is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. How that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. How did he die? He shed his blood. Had to shed his blood. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. When you're saved, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Boy, what a blessing that is. So what we see here is we see a wonderful thing. We see grace. Grace is God saving those that probably shouldn't be saved. But God doing something to save them. When we get saved, we get the Holy Spirit, and we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. So the Trinity is active in salvation. I'll close with this. I barely have any room left. So let's put it like this. The Father's grace... we see in sending Jesus. And I'm running out of room. We see the Father's grace in sending Jesus. Let's go to John 3, 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Why? Because of grace. That whosoever believe in him, believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we see God's grace in sending the Son, Jesus, to die for us. Then we see the Son's love. We see the Son's love in dying. How did he die? Giving his blood. We see the Son dying by giving his blood. So we see the Son willfully wanting to do whatever he could to save us. And let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, because uh, he died in our place for our sins. And without him dying in my place for my sins, there would be no way for me to pay for my sins except in hell. And I don't want that. So God's grace was, well, I'll let someone else take it for you in your place. Ephesians 5 and verse 2, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and given himself for us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. So we see the Father's grace in sending the Son. We see the Son's love in shedding his blood. And now we see the Holy Spirit's faithfulness. Faithfulness. In dwelling. In us. Do you see the Trinity in salvation? <laughs> I do. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, look at verse 16. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Holy Spirit of God dwelleth in you? So when we're saved, we're saved by the Holy Spirit coming into us. But he won't come in unless we believe. 
So the Father showed His grace from heaven in sending the Son. The Son died, and the Son wants your faith to be in His blood, what He did for you. And when you trust in the blood, the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Christ, the Bible says, and Christ is God, the Bible says, so it's also the Spirit of the Father. When you believe, when you by faith accept the blood atonement of Christ on your behalf for your sins, when you by faith you're saved, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And now you're complete. Now you're whole. Now you're one again. And you're back in the image of God. So there's the message. There you have it. I called it the Trinity of Salvation. Because I see God working as a Trinity, in the sense that God as the Godhead, three in one, is working. But in salvation, it's three in one. The Father's grace to send the Son. The Son's love to shed His blood. And now, you by faith, receive the Holy Spirit. Three in one. Are you saved by grace through faith in the blood? Is your faith in the blood of Jesus? Because that's what Romans 3.25 says. Romans 3.25 says, Through faith in His, now His, well that would be Jesus, blood. Are you trusting the blood atonement of Christ for salvation? You see, if you are, you're trusting in what He did for you. Because you're saying, man, I, I realize I can't save myself. I have to trust in what he did for me. But if you think that you can save yourself, well then go ahead and forget what he did for you. See how that works out for you. But you won't know God's grace. Because God's wrath abides on all those that aren't saved. And I just want you to be saved. And I wanted to give you this message. I, I was just uh, really thrilled to think about this. And that great doctrine of the faith, the Trinity or the Godhead, and how God is three and one and one and three, and how God as three works together with a purpose. Then I thought about salvation, how there's three things that work together. And you need to make sure that your faith is in the blood of Jesus. Because God in His infinite mercy and grace said that's the only way you get to heaven, through faith in the blood. Thanks for watching. We're still here. The rapture had taken place. We'll see you next time. And God bless you. I appreciate you watching. And I want to encourage you to get saved. And uh, if anybody else teaches some other way of salvation, do me a favor. Do like Jude says and earnestly contend for the faith and point them to faith in the blood because that's what our faith is to be in. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.